All right. So I am playing with coloring options in Illustrator. I got carried away as I often do, right? But one thing I notice is if I have all of these crazy fill options going on, uh, the eyes look really boring, just as solid white. I kind of like this soft gradation I used inside this speech bubble. So if I want to use that same coloring in the eyes, there's a shortcut for that. And what it is, is that I select the eye shape, the white shape, and then I use the ink dropper tool, the eyedropper tool, and just click on the coloring solution I like. And it will take all those settings and apply them to the new vector shape. And that's pretty nice. So let me do that with this one as well. Take the eyedropper tool, carry those over. And then remember, these are all just different versions, different layers. So I'm doing a lot of copying and then making a new layer and then edit, paste in place so, because color is all about versatility. Copy. I just want another copy of the outline. Oops. If you don't paste in place, it will paste somewhere else. So paste in place. Then I'm just going to fill that with solid black. And then just play with that overall transparency. Or not. Like maybe it just looks good that way. Oh, I have to select it first. All right, so instead of a straight solid black, I'm going to go for a gradient, but a straight black-white gradient at 90 degrees, and where the bottom is 0% opacity. But I want it darker, longer. There we go. Yeah, so I think that will read a little bit better. Okay, so we want it versatile. And then the last change I might make, eh, I like it. I was gonna put a more solid outline around the speech bubble, but I think that will do. So if this is the color solution I like, I'm gonna save it as an EPS. I actually don't need to save it as an AI file because the EPS can be opened in Illustrator and it has all that information just like an Illustrator file does. But I don't usually save it as an EPS until I'm ready to move it somewhere and just keep it as an AI file until then. Until then. Okay, this is my color logo vector. Right? EPSs are always a vector. Keep all the defaults. Here it is. And then I'm going to go back to Photoshop. Same one where I had my Photoshop colored one. And I'm going to bring in on top of my top layer my new one. And I'm going to hold down Option and Shift and place it right on top because it can benefit from the same offset that I've used for the others to help it show up. So what do I like? Do I like that better? Or do I like this better? Looks like I can move this down just a smidge. There we go. What do you guys like better? This, coloring all in Photoshop, or this, coloring in Illustrator? All right. So I'll upload the Illustrator one. Maybe I'll upload both of them. Who knows? I already have the PNG of the other one, so I just have to turn off the background and then say file save as color logo 2 with offset as a PNG to the desktop with all the backgrounds turned off. 
And of course, Photoshop being what it is, I can blend one into the other. So just infinite number of options. In fact, I think I like that. Come on, Photoshop. There we go. And that is what's so great about your black logo is it can output multiple different iterations, which are kind of exciting, interesting for your portfolio. So I've got this option, I've got that option, I've got this option. And I think I like the one in between. So then I put that PNG, I save my Photoshop file, I put my PNG up to photo bucket, and to help it run a little bit closer, I'm going to go ahead and open it with preview and then just say file export as a PNG to the desktop, it will overwrite it, but that just helps scrub it of some of those lingering uh, Photoshop effect settings that can slow things down. And you just bring it in and that's the third thing. And once you have your sketch, your black logo solution and your color logo solution, whether you color it in Photoshop or in Illustrator or as I did, a combination of both, you are done with assignment six, your first vector project. All right, now what's cool is whereas the black and white one was really simple, because I colored it in Photoshop, you can see there is a slight texture there. Right, and you have like the, the offsets and the, the slight core shadows. So the coloring can get really complicated without me really having to do anything except play with settings. But the actual effect of the logo, don't get seduced by all the options. It's only a good logo if it works well in black and white. So the color is just more experimental when it comes to logo design. And that is it.